Yo. What's going on, my guy? What is good, brother? How you doing? Doing good, doing good. We got a special guest in the building. We have two J's tonight. Oh, um, gotcha. We got new J. Our How's it going? Jay. What's going on? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Welcome, welcome to episode 103. Good to have you here, Mr. J. How are you? Good, thank you. Glad to be here. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, welcome, welcome. Uh, first appearance at the All Out Podcast. So, uh, yeah, give us a little, just want to dive in. Uh, give us a little background, where you're from, what college you go to, the work. So, uh, floor is yours. We're going to throw you right into the fire. And uh, by all means, take it away. Cool. Yeah, I'm from uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, I went to College of Charleston, just graduated last spring, marketing major. And now I'm getting my master's in sport management from the Citadel. That's pretty fire. My sports management is definitely a great, great major. It's the up and coming. Yeah. That, especially, especially for somebody who's a big, big sports fan like ourselves. That's awesome. Yeah. Any, uh, any specific field of sports management or? Uh, dream would be to go NFL, work for a team, market a team. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe UFC, a little bit of baseball, NBA, anything professional or college in like a big area with a big market. Mm-hmm. That is so, dream. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Well, that's awesome, though. That sounds great. Good to see somebody, big fan of sports, out on the show. That's very nice to see. Glad, Absolutely. Glad to have you on. And uh, yeah, uh, before we dive in, uh, Jay, what you been up to? You been good? Oh, yeah, I've been good, my guy. Same mm-hmm. old, same old, of course. Nothing new. Work. Same shit, different day. Yeah, honestly, that's really what it is for me. Mm-hmm. You and the missus doing good at the moment? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. we're great. We're great. Wonderful. I do know it's National Girlfriend Day, so I figured we shout out our two lovely ladies today for the special yeah. this special day. I think that would be a good thing, so we can always show a little love that sure. way. But, um, yeah, anything, anything in that department, Jay? Big? Any? Female crushes instead of, well, obviously Livy Dunn. That's everybody. But outside <laughs> yeah, of her, you know, now, Livy, you know, obviously, uh, nothing right now in the department. Wonderful. Well, it's the play in the field. I love it. That's yeah. what I'd love to see. Well, yeah. Well, let's uh, dive right in. Uh, Jay, being the special guest, uh, you can kick it off, pick whatever topic you'd like, and we can get rolling with that if you like. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about the big news today with the uh, trade deadline. Yeah, Obviously, absolutely. lots of moves today. Mm-hmm. Verlander and the Mets kind of selling out. <laughs> yeah, like we, like we know, Mets are going to Met, right? Yeah, pretty much. Absolutely, it's been a eventful trade deadline. A lot of a lot of big moves. Biggest being, like we mentioned today, uh, Justin Verlander going back to Houston, leaving the Mets. Uh, not the only Mets pitcher leaving, though. Max Serger is going to Texas to replace Jacob DeGrom now that he's out for the year. So I guess that's kind of a, a pretty good band-aid, Max Scherzer. So um, Texas is making moves to be pretty dominant. But, um, yeah, moves all around the league. Jack Flattery leaving the Cardinals. Uh, Braves got a little bit of bullpen help with former Philly Brad Han. Philly's making moves themselves, getting a uh, very good pitcher and a Michael Rout- or Strahan. Michael Lorenz and Lo- Lorenz. What is Thank you. Lorenz, yeah, Lorenz yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. But, uh, yeah, big move, all-star starter there. So, very good pick for the Phils. And, uh, yeah, rest of the league doing stuff. Big winners today were the Marlins, making five big acquisitions, including, including Josh Bell and uh, a few other biggies in the – Relief department, but yeah, all around. Very big, successful day for the Marlins and around the league. So, uh, Jay, what you got is your biggest move of the day? What team were you surprised? What is your biggest flop, Trey? What you got so far? Biggest move, I honestly think, would probably be... Hmm. It's tough. You know, I I do want to say for Houston getting Verlander is a really big one. I, I Berlin's big name, obviously him going to the Astros is just, you know, that's huge for them. Mm-hmm. Um, Marlins getting the, the surge of people, you know, Josh Bell, Gene Segura, and Khalil Watson. Those are 
that's huge for them, keeping the Marlins obviously in things. Um, adding that to obviously Jazz, that's that's going to be big for them. Flop? Hmm. The Angels getting Dominic Leon. Le- Le- I don't know how you say his last name. Um, but I think that's, you know, and them not trading um, Shohei is, is interesting for me. Yeah, they could have got, pe- got a pretty penny back, but I guess, like the manager said, he, the GM said, he doesn't want to be the guy that traded tra- Shohei Otani. So I guess that definitely played a part in it. But they could have gotten the they could have gotten a pretty penny back for sure. But I guess I understand their moves without a doubt to be able to keep the one of the best players, if not the best player in the league right now. Um, but yeah, big move there. Uh, are you shocked that the Padres didn't make as many moves, keeping Josh Hader, Blake Snell, and Juan Soto as all three of those guys were big trade market names. Surprised that all three of them were going to be staying in the brown and gold. I guess so. Yeah, brown and gold. Yeah, a little bit surprised. I mean, <clears throat> with the state of the Padres, I really thought they would, you know, kind of trade them more. They're in, they're in, the Padres are in a very weird spot. I feel like they, those people should have been moved on and or moved off of, and you know, Padres need to work on themselves more. Yeah, they should probably. They might have taken the Mets approach and um, try to become big sellers, but um, it's crazy. You had the number one payroll in the league. And their sellers at the deadline. So yeah, uh, something something snapped in between these two areas right here. But um, hey, as Phillies fans, as the Mr. J informed me today that he is, which is great. Go um, birds. We're ha- go birds, go Phillies. We're happy to see the Mets met because that just uh, brings a smile to all Phillies fans' faces. So um, but yeah, they're metting. Uh, other J J T. Jeez, uh, what am I gonna do tonight? I don't know. I mean, you guys, I don't know how I'm going to go with this. Is it Jay? No, oh, let me think. Uh, let's go, Sean. How about Sean? You like Sean? I'm down with that. I mean, or we can, go, with you know, I, we can go to obvious route, but I would think that, you know. I know we can go Jay Sean, obvious. but it doesn't it just doesn't sound right anymore. It used to sound normal, but it doesn't anymore. And now I'm just so used to going with Jay. But um, Jay, well, for now, we know who, who we're talking about. Um... What is your biggest takeaway from the deadline? What is your wow? What a move! I can't believe it. What team? Oh um, yeah. So my wow, what a move! Would a thousand percent. It was the first move mentioned. Was Justin Justin Verlander going back to the Astros? Um, I mean, again, y'all, y'all know I'm not the biggest baseball guy, but I'm pretty certain the Astros won it all last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, pretty with, sure. Yeah. You know, winning it all. You're going to the Mets just to go back to the team you want it all with. Um, you know, tickle me crazy, but that's just kind of crazy to hear. Um, you know, so that personally for me was the – that was a move again for me that – because it, it came to my phone while I was at work, and I'm just like, he went to the – because I, again, not a huge baseball fan. I'm, I looked, and I was like – isn't he already? A, isn't he already an Astro? Like, what are they talking about? When I found he was a Met, and I was like, well, that was stupid. So, um, me personally, yeah, that was my biggest move, and that was the move I was like, yeah, that's. I mean, I don't. I don't really know what that does really for the Mets. Like, I don't really know what their thought process was, but getting a guy for like equivocally almost what a couple months rental just to send him back. I don't really know. But, yeah, I think that was my wild move of the death line. You're not the, definitely not the only one feeling that after like, you know, everything you stated. They just had him, and the Mets were supposed to be that big move. And is my mic muted? I don't know if it's muted. No, we're um, Supposed to be that big move, and just kind of didn't do anything. So, kind of crazy. But um, I once again, Mets are Mets. That's great to see. But, uh, yeah, that's a... Big shocker and crazy to see. But I wonder what team do you think is going to have the biggest turnaround now that the deadline is officially passed? What do you think team is going to ride, ride this wave of chemistry and turn things around? Or just keep things going? Talk, oh, which, which Jay are you talking to? Are you are open ended or? Open Jay. Either Jay. Jay won. Well, I'll give it to the Jay that knows uh, way more baseball than I do. <laughs> 
Um, you know, I can go with the obvious answer, and it's a little bit biased, but I think the Bills can obviously come back and do a lot. Um, look, you're, you're helping a team that has the talent, but some for some reason we're not producing. I don't know what it is. The Astros, yes, they're obviously going to be good. Um, you have teams like that. The Marlins, um, I think those teams are going to be the top of the food chain as they are now. Um, team that's not going to produce from this is obviously the Mets. I mean, they're they're trading their big players away. They traded Degrom. They traded Verlander. They traded um that other guy. Sure. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing. It's, it's kind of like a 76ers process type thing where I don't know why it didn't work, but. We know that all too well. Definitely, yeah. a, good, definitely a good comparison there, though. They're kind of just trying Palm to reboot. Was the, Palm was the left handed hitter, right? I don't. Was, was the guy that the Mets gave away outside of Verlander, that was their left handed hitter or something like that, I believe? Oh, the power guy. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, no. F- Tony Fong or DeGrom? Tommy Fong. Tommy Fong. Tommy Fong. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, he was their power hitter. I was going to say DeGrom was the pitcher. But, um, okay. you know, to, he was their big, pretty solid guy. Not, not like your, obviously their best yeah. hitter is Alonzo, but, you know, he definitely produced for well. But, yeah, they gave up. God or gave, gave, up, gave him up as well. But, yeah, the Mets are just in a weird, weird state right now, I guess. But um, we'll see how they handle this. They find themselves 18 plus games back in the NL race and about nine in the wild card. So or seven in the wild card. I think. But still far, still far away. But, uh, sounds yeah. like it sounds very far away. Yeah. The wild card. I mean, they're done. They're not not winning the division, of course, because the Braves are just not losing games, honestly. But yeah, I agree. The Phillies should. I don't even just like the stuff they did at the deadline. It's just the Phillies just turned things around now. I mean, their guys have, could not be playing worse right now other than Bohm, Scott, and Marsh. Nobody else is producing. It's just the rookies and the young guys. But, um, like, Turner obviously has been playing awful. Harper is playing awful. Schwarber is playing bad. <laughs> and, I mean, Harper's playing, I take that back, awful, but he's not been playing very well. But, I mean, that's kind of... A weird state right now. Even Cassianos is had a down turn after the break, but we'll turn things around. Hopefully, That's what I'm down one nothing right now, by uh, top of the ninth. But yeah, uh, big news. Uh, not the biggest news though. Just in the MLB, we got some big news that really, really is big for the uh, NFL and uh, <laughs> probably craziest news of all: the uh, DeAndre Hopkins trade leaving, or not trade, but signing, going to the Tennessee Titans. A very big, nice size contract, and joining Derrick Henry and who knows at quarterback. But um, yeah, what is your biggest surprise about that trade as far as him going to Tennessee at J one? Right, J. Which one of those is J one? I'm just gonna have oh, okay, right, right. right, that. Cool. Yeah. Um, I take it. I mean, him going to. Tennessee, for me personally, was kind of a, I mean, a head stretcher. Um, I heard a lot of reports that he was in New York a lot. So, um, I, you know, I heard you, you know, seeing the Jets. He obviously went to New England to the Patriots. I mean, I think the Bills were interested. Obviously, the Chiefs are in search of a number one receiver outside of the tight end, Travis Kelsey. So, um, you know, the fact that he went with the Titans, um, let me for a little loop. Um, you know, with their quarterback character right now, obviously with the rookie, and you got Ryan Tannehill coming back. You also got Willis um, in the in the fold as well. So I mean, you know, I feel like they're in the you know they're in the three man frenzy here as far as who's going to be their quarterback. But um, yeah, I can say for him to you know assert himself in that mix, uh, I personally would see it as more of a prove it year for him. I think that he's kind of undertaking the prove it mentality here, like okay, you know. I'm seeing the value out here. I'm seeing what guys can, what guys are offering for my, you know, for my service. So let me go ahead and get a year in where a proven year, kind of like obviously what Odell Beckham's doing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, I, you know, I'm going to show guys that I'm still the guy who, who they remember me to be. I'm still top tier receiver in this league. So um, I'm going to say again, let me go somewhere 
for a year and essentially just show that. Show that I'm still that guy. Show that I'm still DeAndre Hopkins that everybody remembered me for. So, um, like I said, again, obviously it's great news for Tennessee. They got themselves a number one receiver. But, um, I mean, for D-Hop himself, obviously in, like, you know, later stages of his career, um, I would I would have thought, you know, winning the title would probably be a tad bit more important for him right now. So um, that's why, again, that's kind of why I was kind of confused with even talking about him going to the Patriots or obviously him talking about the Tennessee Titans. Um, I was almost for sure that it was either going to be Bills, Chiefs, or possibly Jets somewhere thrown in that mix. But um, like I said, again, yeah. Or matter of fact, or I think early inclinations that they had thought he was going to Cowboys. So um, like I said, again, yeah, just in general, just the, him landing with the Tennessee Titans were – was definitely a shock, surprise to me. Big, big surprise to most, without a doubt. And for me, I mean, I'll give this question to Jay. I, for a guy that has been talking about quarterback play in his entire, well, last couple of years at least, with being, dealing with Kyler Murray, now that he had the chance to pick any of quarterbacks like Jay mentioned, do you, um, do you think that it's, uh, um, I'm gonna ask. Do you think that it's a little strange that he went with Ryan Tannehill or Malik Willis? <laughs> and Harper just tied the game. If you can't hear my dad yelling downstairs, I, I'm pretty sure that's why Jay smiled. <laughs> Harper yeah, just tied exactly. the game. Really go ahead, go ahead and double. It sounds like Dad's murdering a cat downstairs, but. Um, yeah, Harper opposite. He just killed like he just killed like a gnat that he'd been trying to kill for the past few days. <laughs> <laughs> got him, got him. So, right. uh Bill's really uh, tied the game. But um that's just uh do you think it's a little strange that he went with a quarterback room that's not certain since he's been talking about I'm sure quarterback play for the last couple of years now. He decided to go with uh Malik Willis or Ryan Tannehill, oh, that's not what sure he's got to go. This one for me? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, my whole thing on the D-Hop thing, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Um, I think, yeah, he does want to be a wide receiver one, and he deserves to be from what he's proven to himself and Houston and in Arizona. He's been a great receiver. You can see on Hale Murray, all things like that. Injuries got the best of him and the the six game suspension last season. I thought he was gonna go to um Bills, New England, Jets, one of those teams really. He even listed um teams that he wanted to go to. None of them Tennessee was not on there at all. For him to go to Tennessee in a weird quarterback room it's it's very interesting to me i think it's uh i don't know it's it's surprising uh jay you, you should be happy to know that nick cassianos just put us off three to one with a two-run home run how beautiful i let's love cassianos let's go yeah but i mean let's like i said again like looking at this i mean looking at this Again, looking at the news, I mean, just, like, I'm pretty sure, like, the awkwardness, even Tennessee Titans fans had of, like, we just got who? Like, how did we get him? And, I mean, looking at some of his quotes, he's quoted as saying it wasn't hard for him to pick Titans over um, more the Patriots in this situation. But I'm just saying, like, you know, even if, even if it would have went to the Patriots, I feel like that would have put a lot of pressure, a lot of onus on Mac Jones to perform this year. Because obviously, again, you know, he's in a, basically in a prove it type year for himself. Obviously, year one was year one. Had to had some backtracking year two. Like I guess I feel like Bill definitely wants him to definitely take a step forward. And I feel like that would have helped their offense because, I mean, they, they're a team also that struggles with offensive identity. If you're looking at Tennessee, you know, whether you like it or not, their offensive identity is Derrick Henry. The Tennessee Titans' identity is Derrick Henry. So, I mean, you know, that's why it kind of threw me off to me for a loop where – you know, what exactly is the formula here? Like, I, like, I wish I could be someone close to him and know, like, hey, what was the deciding factor? Why Tennessee out of all places? You know, he could have went. Like I said, you mentioned Bills. I would have thought that would have been a, a super good move for the Bills. I mean, you know, they would have had a big three at receiver that could rival, obviously, the Bengals. 
with um, T. Higgins, Boyd, and obviously Chase, you know, they have – they would have had D. Hop, Stephon, and um, Davis. So, I mean, I think that would have been great. Obviously, especially with them for a team that now came out and said that Josh Allen's going to be throwing the ball a whole lot more. He's going to be more in the pocket, you know, not going to, you know, do the improvised runs and stuff. So, um, yeah, like I said, you would have – if you're – if you're D Hop, you're put in a situation you were to go to the Bills of, hey, look, they already almost they're already almost a title contender. I'm gonna be, I can be the third guy to put them over the hump. You know, we you know, new, uh, a new system. Or obviously, you go to the Kansas City, where you know you're going to get targeted. You know you're going to be the number one receiver because we don't even know who the receivers are. So, um, you know, you know you're going to be that guy. So, um, like I said, I don't, I don't know, I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, Tennessee. Again, I mean, like how Glenn mentioned, I mentioned earlier, like the quarterback room in that in Tennessee is just a turmoil. Like they got a, they, they drafted a quarterback who, when their their quarterback at the start of the season, obviously Ryan Tannehill got injured. They played um they played Willis, so their second string quarterback is getting a lot of run. So you got three quarterbacks who got strong arguments to why they should be playing. One's a first rounder. One got a lot of experience playing last year, and one and one walked into the season last year as a starter. So, I mean, you know, you want to put yourself in that mix. Um, like I said, that's kind of, you know, again, it's a, just a huge head structure. Very much of a head, very much of a head structure. And honestly, um, you mentioned the Patriots. I think that would have been his best fit because if you say the Bills, yeah, he would have been great, but it would have been a debate for wide receiver one and any other team. He is wide receiver one, but the quarterback room is kind of iffy. But the Patriots, he's quarterback number one, and I don't know about the general public, but I still have faith in Mac Jones and Bill Belichick in the system. So Patriots, for me, would have been the best fit, but um, Bills would have been the best chance for a championship. I feel like Bills would have been the best chance for a championship. Titans, I guess, is money. But, and then uh, Patriots would have been a good mix of both because he's wide receiver one, and he can still have a chance because as good as the AL, or not AL, at least AFC East is next year, it's still because the Patriots are still gonna be good if they have a wide receiver one like DeAndre Hopkins. But yeah, you believe the Patriots gonna be good this this upcoming season? I think so. Yeah, I mean they would have been. Ba- I think they would have been good, better. Like right now, I could still if you if they threw DeAndre Hopkins in the mix, they would have been battling for that AL AFC East. I mean, flat they would have been better for the top of the AFC. East. So you got well, your beloved still- Miami Dolphins, you got the New York Jets, you got the Bills, and you got New England. Where do you Good. have New England finishing? Let's just say with D Hall. Where do you have New England finishing in that division that they would have acquired D Hall? Even if they finished third, they still could have battled to the end. It could have been a division where the last place team is like 10 and 7 or fucking 11 and 6. So, I mean, if you have Mac Jones at quarterback, you still have the system of Bill Belichick. Patriots defense, no matter what's going on, is always solid. Whether it's best defense in the league, it's always at least a solid admirable defense. And then you have surrounding pieces like Ramondre Stevenson, you have uh, Henry, you have J- Jacoby Myers who despite that one play he met, did last year, he's still a solid wide receiver too. And if you throw D-Hop in the mix, that's a pretty solid offense. And the Patriots always have a way to win games. I know that Brady was a big part of that for many years, but uh, Mac Jones, I don't know where the, just the, the, the hate for Mac Jones came from recently, or last year, but I still think he's got some talent in him. And if they were usually on a solid wide receiver, I think he could have done some damage. I'm not saying they would have won the AFC East, but they would have definitely battled and held their own. They wouldn't have been the punching bag. Okay. No problem. I can see the, I, I I can see opposing team's record being, I mean, what you got? Uh, I could probably see their team, the other team's records, they play them six times. So I, should, I could see them going like four and two. I don't know. Four and two in their division? Three and three. Like the opposite, of the teams that play the Jets, the I mean, yeah, that's yeah, the that's three of them that's in their, playing that's in their little like three, yeah. three and three, four and two. That's okay. Cool. Uh, they wouldn't have clean swept them in any way. Wouldn't even have been five and one if they had D hop. I think they would have gone okay, three so and three if they had D hop. All right, you said three and okay, three and three. I was going to add, if you say four and two, that means that they would have had to play one of those teams and not lost. So no, if you would have said four and two. Okay. okay, so um, four and two so would be the other guys. Okay. So Jay, let me ask you this because I don't, I don't, I don't think you said it yet. Who is your NFL team? NFL Eagles. Your Eagles. Oh, oh, so you're from Philly? Ah, yeah, I got you. Um, 
What is your basically? What is your um? What is your what is your feel for the Eagles coming into this season? What do you feel like you guys have to do in order to get back to where you were and obviously win that game that you were in last season? Yeah, we we were in you know the best situation you'd have. Fourteen and three, won the NFC, first seed, go to the Super Bowl, just to lose it all on what I call is a ticky tack foul because the ball was overthrown. Anyways, this season we we got to be better, and we did that by drafting arguably one of the best college football defenses in the last twenty years. I would yeah, I would think that know. one's the best outside the Miami Dolphins in two thousand one with um, Ed Reed. Um, having those positions and those backups for people like Slay, who's 32 now, I think, and we have Keely Ringo, we can learn behind him. Nolan Smith, Hassan, Fletcher Cox, Brennan Graham, Jordan Davis, Jordan, Jane Carter. I mean, you have a defensive front that's going to come at you, it, it, which honestly, I, I, I might get flack for saying this, is similar to the uh, big blue wrecking crew with the Giants with LT. We have one of the strongest defensive fronts I think the NFL is going to ever see in a long time. For the offense, we obviously lost both of our coordinators, defense and offensive coordinator. Coordinators make a difference. Um, I think Sirianni has to bring guys in that are going to play to our advantages. Hertz is obviously our big, one of our biggest assets. Having him paid to be an eagle is huge but we need to make sure he stays healthy and we have things that can take some of the run off of him, but he can still have the option to run, which is why we got Swift and Penny. I think winning those big games, because we have a tougher schedule like the Bills, like the Chiefs, Dolphins, um, even our divisional games, the, the Giants I think are coming up soon. Uh, Cowboys, we got to win those. Those, those can, kind of games we can't drop again. And the Niners too. Yeah, uh, I mean, like I say, I, obviously, again, you guys made it to the championship game last year, and I mean, most of what you said, I feel like is a thousand. Percent, I'm not an Eagles fan at all, but what you said is a thousand percent true. Like I say, looking at it, you guys, essentially drafted everybody in Georgia. Um, you know, you drafted everybody in Georgia. You, like I say, you mentioned Darius Slay is getting of age, so the young guys could definitely learn from him. Going out and picking up Swift, I felt like was just like you got to be kidding me. Like, yeah, who allowed you guys to get Swift? Like, what happened? So um, I do genuinely feel like you know, you guys, uh, right? Exactly. Like, like who signed off on this? Like, this is almost like, like this is like I feel like that, that should have got vetoed. Like how Chris Paul going to the Lakers got vetoed when Kobe was there. Like it's crazy. But um, but like I said again, like you guys looking at it, I do feel like you guys front defense of seven are going to scare a lot of teams. I feel like what you guys would bring up on the interior game, I feel like that's what's going to set the tone again for you guys this year. I'm up front. I don't. I feel like throughout a duration of four quarters, I don't think off, many offensive lines are going to want to see you guys constantly throughout the game. So, um, like I said, with that being said, obviously, again, you got you still got Brown. You still got um. Oh, I'm looking at the, you. Look, you still got. I'm looking at him in the face. The other receiver number, Devontae Smith. Devontae still got him. Smith. Yeah. Devontae so I'm gonna say, say, you know, I mean. You still got uh, – you guys still got uh, – if, if I were you guys, the only concern I would have is making sure that you guys, especially your quarterback, start the season out healthy, finish the regular season healthy, and go into the playoffs and do what you guys got to do. I mean, I feel like many teams get caught up in trying to prove it all year or prove it, you know, all season that, oh, our quarterback's so great, watch us do this or watch us risk this situation. Like, no, like, you know, we take the year – Obviously, a lot of a lot is going to be expected of Jalen Hurts this season. So, uh, what we don't want to do, we don't want to try to overflate his, his his plate. We don't want to try to make it seem like, oh, he got to go out here and you know have 350 passing yards a game, 125 rushing yards. Like, I feel like you guys should like just, just do your just do your best, to take care of him, make sure he doesn't get you know try to play over his skis, and like I say, head into the playoffs and hopefully catch some of the success that you guys did last year. So, um. I mean, like I said, that you guys are definitely, again, not a Eagles fan. But you guys, as a team, look good. I personally, for one, thought the, the, I thought the Niners were better than you guys. I, I feel like we can easily get a repeat of Niners Eagles again in the NFC Championship game. So, um, like I said, I feel like you know you got you guys and the Niners are, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully they got a quarterback. 
But um, yeah. Shit, yeah. yeah. So um, so so again, like I said, we're definitely hope hopefully that matchup again come to fruition because I think if like that was and I'm I'm not one making excuses for the Niners, but if that was like a even battle playing field game versus you guys in the Niners, I think it would have came down to the wire. You guys could even still end up beating. Them. But um, I do genuinely want to see you guys for the Niners again. I think that would make for excellent TV. With that being said, I should not see you guys lose to the Cowboys. I don't care what happens. You guys can lose to the Commanders. You guys can lose to the Eagles. I just I – mean, I'm sorry, you are Eagles. You guys can lose to the Giants, I meant to say. Um, I just – I don't really think – looking at it on paper, I don't think the Cowboys have the – I don't think they have the manpower enough to be able to stick with you guys. Um – I think the commanders could be sneaky good. Um, they caught a little bit of, they caught a tad bit of, you know, fire last season, of course. Um, the Eagles are obviously, well, I'm not, not, I keep saying the Eagles, think about the Giants. The Giants are obviously in like a real, real proven situation. Obviously, giving Danny Jones all that money. Um, you, you know, you, Saquon basically finessed Saquon. himself into a, yeah, he just got him, he just got himself a year, a year deal, $11 million. Um, you guys went out and got the tight end. Well, they not you guys, but the Eagles, the Giants went out and got the tight end from the. Um, you okay, you okay? I don't. I don't know why I'm thinking. I don't know why I'm thinking about Giants. You two. You're but, talking so yeah. fast. It's okay. Breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> but, Just us. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. Like you guys got the tight end. It's like from, he's on a clock. He's got to get this in before the, before we go to commercial right, break. Right. Yeah. I'm. I'm trying to definitely get it in. But uh, no. Nah, but the Giants got the tight end from the Raiders. So it's like, you know, they got a, you know, they still got a lot of making up to do, but I really do think that they're going to be looking to upset you guys, especially off of how you guys beat them last season. I, I think the first time you guys played the Giants last season, it was almost a joke. Like, it was almost like, why are we even watching this? So, um, like, I feel like a lot of teams are going to definitely be looking for, like, a lot of revenge against you guys this season. So, wishing you guys all the best, but, uh, yeah, I, 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 I believe you guys should definitely take this division in a pretty much in a, I wouldn't say a cakewalk, but whatever the next tier up above cakewalk, I do I do feel like you guys should be able to comfortably be at the top of you guys to do. Absolutely, I, I believe that too. Word. <laughs> well, yeah, no, one hundred percent. I think that it's big, uh, big job done as far as divisional games. We always have trouble with the Cowboys. They always have trouble with us at least once. So it's always one and one, but. I think this year we're going to be coming out. A lot of teams are going to have a revenge tour on us, but we're also on our own revenge tour as well. Because I, I mean, after watching that Super Bowl, it was just tough to. It, that one stung a good bit. So I can't believe I you guys blew it. Our defense couldn't stop high school uh, high school football plays. So I mean, they probably you know didn't couldn't really do much. About that, I mean, but. Yeah, I feel like sod father working against you. It's, it's just, <laughs> I mean, we kind of really kind of get shot ourselves in the foot. I mean, the biggest difference was the, in that game was the one turnover and our defense just flat out disappeared. Just, flat, I mean, yeah, when your offense yeah. scores thirty five points, you should win that game, flat out. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, with the fact how you mentioned with the, and that's what makes it more frustrating, right? Like again, Jalen Hurts. Outside of that one turnover, that one blemish, yeah, okay. that was probably his best game he ever played in his life. Mm -hmm. Like the kid was spot on, and he was flawless, making the correct reads. Just that, right? Just that one turnover. Like I said again, you're asking, you know, your defense, you know, to hold the game when you only give up. Like so that one turnover was costly, of course. But I mean, you know, you would expect again with that defense that you guys got, I would expect those guys to hold it as well. But um, with that being said, I still got the forty nine ers over you guys. But um, yeah. So uh, that's gonna be that. I'm gonna probably ride with the. Should we make NFC. more bets like we did with Tua? Because it worked out for me in that way. So Tua yeah. worked out for who? For me. Tua, Tua touchdown. We can look back at the tapes if you want. You had to say Tua touchdown. We can oh, look yeah, back I at did, the But I mean, I think I wanted in the total. See, you want a battle, but I won the war. Like, you know, you, yeah, you want to battle a little too. Touchdown, he didn't I play. Think. He got hurt because the coaching staff in Miami. Be bad anyway. You can't, that's, that's a, a, a what, what we can go on is what he actually did until he almost died with his 75 concussions this hey, year. Listen, Captain concussion yeah. right there. Captain Concussion. So you got your faith in Captain Concussion. That's what you you have, I have a better chance of calling him Captain Concussion than Tua turn the ball over. I'll tell you that. 
Captain Concussion is a pretty good one. I'm not going to lie. He's not to turn the ball over. He 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 scores touchdowns. He does touchdowns. He might have a few turnovers, but Jesus, why is it not Josh Allen turn the ball over? Oh, no, it's jo- Josh Allen, Josh Allen, Allen, but Tua you know, is Josh Tua Allen turned the ball over. Top three in MVP vote in the past two years or some craziness like that. But anyway, um, I wouldn't. You know what? You know what would be the best chance for the Miami Dolphins to really compete if they started Mike White. That's going to be their best chance of winning. Are you thinking of the Jets? No, he's he's in Miami. He went to Miami? No yeah, way. I'm a huge Mike White fan. So, <laughs> I give you that one. He's an absolute stud. He's I, a, I love I don't, certified I, I didn't understand exactly why the Jets were trying to, like, bash him. Like, oh, he's not that good. Like, the kid came in balling us. But, um, but yeah, that, I think that would be you guys' best chance. <laughs> well, we're not you guys. You're not a, you're not a Miami fan, but you're no, a Tua I'll, fan. I'll, so, therefore, you are you guys. Tua's my guy. Tua's my guy. I'll give you that. So, so Jay, with that being I, said, who do you have? Oh, go ahead, man. No, I was just saying, yeah, two is my guy. I was just repeating myself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he, he is a bum. But, um, Jay, who do you who you have coming out of the AFC? Who do you think is going to be awaiting? Because obviously I presume that you got the Eagles coming out of the NFC. I would, I would assume. Okay. You got the Eagles. So, the AFC, who do you got meeting you guys in the Super Bowl? It's kind of a hot take. Um, At least for the AFC one seed, right now I am a firm believer that the Jags are going to win the one seed. It's a hot take. I uh, super hot. Oh, I, I hot that th- that thing is flaming. Yeah, Get off the pot that's boiling right now. <laughs> oh, I think the Jags got it this year. I mean, they were able to go into the playoffs as a I think a six seed and beat the Chargers. Mm-hmm. Who hold up? Who they beat? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I messed that. Who they beat in the playoffs? Chargers. Char- they beat the Chargers. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, they, they were probably do, they were probably dominating. Dominant. The Jaguars were winning the whole game. Right? Is that what happened? Nope. The Chargers uh, were good in the first half. Then T-Law led them to a. Um, they were good in the first half. But they have like a big lead game. or something or something. Yeah, I mean they played. They actually went to the game. In the second half, they must not came on the field because T-Law led them to a twenty-eight oh, wow. point comeback. Twenty-eight points? I thought you were going to say they were up like ten or fourteen. Oh, yeah, twenty-eight up, points, yeah. and they lost. Damn, that would have sucked. If you remember, the next game they played was the divisional. <laughs> they played the Chiefs. That's where the game where Mahomes got hurt. Oh yeah, yeah. The Jaguars played, not the Chargers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For um, the record, in case you in case you haven't noticed before, uh, the other J tonight is a big big time Chargers fan. So uh, you know, uh, she was giving me crap a couple episodes about our Phillies in the World Series. I just wanted to make sure we cleared everything up today. Yeah, get, get everything, get everything known. Right. I, I I like the Chargers. I just think they're in, I, I, they're in a shit spot in their division. Oh yeah, yeah. we thought we we're, we're. I would listen. I got us winning the division, of course. But if I was a sober analysis guy, everybody's fighting for everybody outside of the Chiefs is fighting for number two spot. Yeah. But I mean, it's not that big of a fight. I mean, I think you guys are ten times better than the Broncos, ten times better than the Raiders. <laughs> I mean, so. but what it is like with the with the with the Broncos? Of course, I don't believe in them. I don't think anyone would have brain should. But at the end of the day, with with these teams that have so, it's almost like a stock. Like their their stock dropped so much last year, they almost have no choice but to be better than last year. So it's like. Yeah. You know, with that, and again, the Raiders, you know, they're a whole bunch of idiots. But they they gave, obviously, uh, that quarterback some money. Uh, Jimmy Jimmy G. G. Uh, Jimmy they got G. rid of their tight end. I don't understand it. They still got Devontae Adams, which is Devontae Adams. Um, their defense, leave, their defensive, like, back forward leaves a lot to be desired. I don't know any of those guys. I don't think any of them are good. But, um, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, teams like that, they can get hot. What I, what, what I most fear now being a Chargers fan, is what direction do we go in after that cataclysmic loss that we took to the hands of the Jags in the playoffs? That's kind of my biggest thing right now. Like, I don't want to sit here and, oh, yeah, you know, you know, we're just going to bounce back, no problem. Usually teams that take such a shell shot loss to that magnitude, you know, typically takes them a while to recover. If you look at the Bills, 
ever since um, ever since Stephon Diggs looked at the Chiefs on the sidelines and then said, "Oh, I'm going to be back here. I'm going to beat these guys," haven't beaten them yet in the playoffs. So, I mean, in the day, like you know, stuff. What I, what I most fear the most is that we end up being that we end up being a team who took such a huge. It's like in boxing, we took such a huge right to the jaw that it might be broken. So I'm, I can say again, you know, we got obviously we got a new we got a new head coach. Obviously we played our quarterback a ton of money, which I feel well de- well deserved. Still got Keenan Allen, still got Mike Williams. Hopefully health is on our side this year. But um, see, like I say again, you know, Khalil Mack is obviously still up front. Our back four still look pretty good. So um, like I say again, with Johnson in the draft. Oh yeah, exactly. We had a we had a pretty solid draft. So yeah, I mean, yeah, like, my, draft. My, yeah, my whole thing is you know. Oh, you know, can we essentially look at last season, how we ended last season, as more of a, a blip on the radar, or is that going to be something that ended up basically that became the starting point of something you know bad? So, um, like I say again, I would love to sit here and make it seem like yeah, you know, we're just going to storm through the league, you know. But to being an honest fan, believing in my team, of course, but at the end of the day, it's like we have to definitely bounce back. And again, again like also, even with paying our quarterback all that money. Typically, teams that pay their quarterbacks so much money, the quarterback is oh, like digressing. Like you don't yeah, hear guys yeah. become, oh yeah, like you know how many guys you see, oh yeah, I'm the highest paid quarterback and I'm in the Super Bowl. It doesn't really happen much, so that's kind of like you know again. Do I think he deserves oh. it? I mean, Mahomes is again. That's why he's obviously one of the best quarterbacks ever. I love just I, mean, um, I love I love Herbo, but I don't think I don't think he's in that realm yet. He hasn't shown me anything much in the playoffs to think that. So I mean, in the day. Like I say again, like just a lot of realistic concerns, but I mean, you know, hopefully, hopefully I'm wrong. But like I, said, I just don't want us to go down that that hole of, you know, we took such a big hit last year to our confidence that we can't seem to shake it off. Very wonderful. Uh, are you picking him in fantasy this year if you have the opportunity? You say you're number one quarterback. You want to pick? You said, am I picking him in fantasy? Um, if he's on, if he's on the board. I would consider. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you guys who my top quarterback I would pick is because you guys not steal him. Oh, um, steal him. oh, I don't know because we were all in a um, very intense about to be our first ever dynasty league for the All Out podcast. Yes, and uh, uh, yeah, that's a smart move not to yeah. tell us your secrets. Yeah, you're right, exactly. Battling like you, head to head. Yeah, like me. Matter see what I try to do there? I try to trick yeah, you. like you know what I'm saying. Like you don't see the faces. Me and Bill Belichick are like brothers. So you think I'm going to say? You think learning from Bill, Billio, Billion? You know what I'm saying? I taught him what he knows. You think I'm going to tell you my strategy? Absolutely not. Fair, 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 fair. fair I rather I rather deflate balls before I do that. You think I'm going to sit here and tell you my strategy? Well, you might want to take a few pointers from me in our league since I walked away with the crown last year. But, well, you caught me in. Last year was my rookie season in these leagues. I didn't know what that I just fair. I was just I was just picking top guys. I'm just like, yeah, he's gonna have a good season. He's gonna have a good season. He's not gonna get injured. I think oh, I had Mike Williams in one of them. You had Mike Williams. Damn, he damn near didn't play all season. Like he played like you had Mike Williams and Darren Waller snaps. were your two tight ends, and that was Ooh. your that was that was that was your two big picks, and that was that right. And then yeah, those guys then you know. I got Aaron Rodgers and, you know, stuff like that. You know, he didn't throw – boy, this is a stat going on now. He didn't throw for more than 300 yards in, like, 23 weeks of play. So, I, I was just stuck. But, um, but yeah, no, this year I got a I got a formula. I got a – you know, I, I got in contact with the Chad Chad GBT guys, the AI or whatever. We already, we already in all the simulations and we haven't one. Don't even worry about it. Good, good little team this year. Perfect. Well, I'm going, matter of fact, I'm going to win like I did in the hockey league. I played hockey my entire life. Never played football. Jay played football his entire life. Never played hockey. I won the football league. He won the hockey league. How does that work? <laughs> how, how does that happen? When you're like, a Vegas Golden Knight, you just know what's going on. You got good luck. And I, I picked you, the Golden Knights at the beginning of the season. You did. You I did. picked the Golden Knights. Right. Yeah. I'm surprised. I I will attest. We can look back on videos in the past. Yeah. He definitely picked the Vegas Golden Knights to win. And I couldn't even spell Golden Knights, and I picked the Golden Knights, <laughs> and, and I and I won. All right. So I mean, I feel like I got a. You know, I I don't think I should have a. I don't think I should have a Hall of Fame speech just yet. You know. Just but, yet. Um, I feel like they should go ahead and start. You might want to hold off on that. Scope, scoped in my head. We're going to Hall of Fame one day. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, if that if that happens, I will be very happy. Be well deserved. Yeah. I'll be amazed, but it will it will be well deserved. Imagine winning two years in a row. The if only you, two years in. You pick the same team back to back years. I'm not. I'm just gonna stop covering hockey. I'm just gonna leave it to you. Two for two. Two for two. Yeah. You know uh, what is most important? The next one. The next one. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, <laughs> 103 episodes. Mother of God. Right. Go, yeah, Jay, you got any big? Uh, I see. It's obviously not your. I don't think it is your first fantasy football league, but um, nope. we we made a league and we qualif- we only had one rule. You had to be on an episode, and look at that. Here we are. We yeah. got on an episode. And here we are. are. You ready for big big predictions? I know your boy Tim is gonna be very confident. He has the first overall, or he has the first selection of what pick he wants. He put one it today. But, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm excited for it. I um, got a lot of, a lot of things I'm ready for. I have the last selection. Um, don't know where the hell I'm gonna end up, but hey, I'll, uh, I'll get there somewhere. You might end up with the first overall pick, maybe. But I wouldn't you won't be picking at all. You wouldn't be picking until the planet. But yeah. <laughs> um, you got any early ideas for a punishment? Since obviously last place has to get punished, right? so. What are we, what always, are we thinking? Always the good Waffle House Challenge. It's a classic. Um, I heard one, and it was like, you have to wear, um, like, your least favorite opposing team player's jersey before an X amount of time. <laughs> so for me, that'd be Dak. And I, I would, I would, I would hate I to wear would, that jersey. I wouldn't. Oh, that would be hell to wear. We you don't like do... Dak? I, I can't stand Dak. You don't like the the workout in the air? We'd be flipping his hips. Like some <laughs> it's good for him. He's still going to throw X amount of picks. And how, I was yeah. saying, how, how about, you know, he's, I think Dak is a generous quarterback. You should. I don't, I don't know if you guys seen it today. He had the play um, in practice that he threw. It was supposed to be a fade. And he essentially threw it right to the safety. Like, I cannot make this up. Like, it was a horrible throwing ball. It's on bar, it was on Barstool, Philly. Right, like, it's like, like Dak already in midseason form. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like Dak's already in MVP shape. Yep. Old Dak. Like, empty calorie Dak. But, um, but yeah, no, nah, I think he, yeah, he absolutely sucks. But, um, I try, tried liking him, but he just not that. Yeah, I, I tried to, but I just can't do it. I, I mean, I can say again, you look at his numbers, maybe people want to look at his, just his numbers. Many people don't obviously also want to say that he gets those. He acquires a lot of those numbers once the game is blown out of proportion. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, again, that is, that that is what that is the definition of fool's gold. So um, yeah, but uh, the Cowboys in general, as long as as long as Mike McCarthy's at the helm, they're going to be horrible. So uh, we'll see. But uh, yeah, no, they're going to be horrible. I definitely will. Um, I think we know that secret. You know, he was talking about that secret quarterback pick. I think he's going. Oh uh, yeah, I, I, that's exactly. Oh, me going with that? Yeah, you're going <laughs> with oh, that. Oh man, um, yeah. Well, hey, look, hey, I mean, hey, he he give me he give me stats. He's gonna give me some stats. He we'll gonna throw it down the field. I'll we'll go for four touchdowns, four hundred and fifty yards the one week, and then won't show up the following. I mean, week. hey, listen. Luckily, that you know the league isn't a win lose as far as like whether the team win or lose it is about the stats. You give me some stats. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. It's going to be fun, but, um, yeah. Uh, y'all got anything else to help us out for tonight? Um, yeah, what else? Oh, uh, Jay, are you in the basketball at all or not really? Uh, a little bit. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know. Oh, obviously, you know, the whole thing with Daniel Lillard, that's one thing. But, uh, Jalen Brown, he got oh, the... Man. Yeah, got the the biggest contract any NBA player has received at one point in time. Bro um, is paid. Yeah, he's very paid. Um, <laughs> obviously, great for him. I feel like the underlying winner in all of this is his manager, whoever that guy is. He got to be sitting high. Like he don't have to do the contract the rest of his life, probably. But um, I will. I'm gonna start off by saying again, this is nothing to do with Jalen Brown. Obviously, I'm a fan of Jalen Brown. At one point in my life, I thought Jalen Brown was better than Jason Tatum. Um, I just like what he brings. I just like what he brings to the table. You know, from you know, a basketball perspective, I like I like the quality of shots he takes. I like the way he plays defense. 
Um, I, I just, I just like, I like him playing basketball. The Boston Celtics are absolute idiots. I don't know exactly what they're thinking, but um, I think Jason Tatum's coming up next season. So if your second best player became the highest paid player to ever touch a basketball, what do you expect your first star, like your star player, to be making? You also went out and got Chris Stapps in the offseason. Um, so, again, I mean, what are you going to tie in? I think he got, like, what, $300, $300, $300 million <laughs> deal uh, somewhere in that department. So if you if you up that for, um, for you know, Jason Tatum, then you're looking at almost paying two guys close to $700 million. Um, I don't need a calculator, but I'm pretty sure that's not good for business. So, I mean, um, I'll say again, huge shots out of Jalen Brown. Um, for a guy that me personally, at the, at the end of the season, I was almost for sure that he's not in the Boston jersey ever again. But, I mean, for him to, you know, get what he got out of the deal, being on numerous, you know, summer after summer after summer, you hear him in trade talks to get this guy, that guy. He was obviously in trade talks before the deal to get Damian Lillard, and Damian Lillard wanted to come to Boston, but, you know, Damian shot that man quick. So, um, yeah, I don't know exactly I don't know exactly what they're doing in Boston. Outside of their horrible play calling and now horrible decision-making, this is the stuff that I, I, I feel like really, you know, dooms a, dooms a franchise because now it's like if you guys don't plan out, which I don't believe you will, if you, if you if the Boston Celtics don't pan out, then now you got so much money tied into one player. So I mean, yeah, like I said, I'm just not a I'm from a business standpoint, I don't get it. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just don't know what the hell I'm talking about, which is fine. But I just don't understand it from a business standpoint. Good for Jalen Brown. Yeah. He got he got a he got a bag. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna say this: the Celtics are a sports staple. They're one of the franchises you think of, but they are not. They ain't no Lakers and they ain't no Cowboys. Those two teams can sell merch like no one's business, and it's why they're always on top. Cowboys do everything. They sell that merch. Lakers do everything. <laughs> they sell that merch. How many right. Magic, how many Shaq, Kobe, even Braun jerseys are out there right. from the Lakers? That's actually Celtics. one of the best takes I think I've ever heard. Celtics got burned, they can man. afford it every year because no matter what they're doing, they always are selling merch in that how many Dak jerseys are out there? God. Too many. I don't know. Celtic, that's a, that's a weird one. I um, I think they're going to run into the troubles, and they're going to have that kind of that drought like they did in the early 2000s after they won um, They won Garnett. Um, mm-hmm. And I think they're going to go down a little bit. And like the Celtics always do, they'll, they'll come back up and, again, be a player and Couple years after yeah. that, but right now they've got to put all their money where their their stars are. Yeah. I think that yeah, it's going to be a strange. It was a strange payment because you're going to have to pay Jason Tatum just as much as he's on the team. But uh, good for him, and yeah, job well, job well done by like you said, his agent. <laughs> Definitely did it. Yeah, agent, yeah, his agent. But, his agent yeah. is the absolute man. Like who? Like, him. His, his yes. agent, honestly, I feel like we'll make this job complete. His agent now has to put out a class on like how how to be an agent. Like nobody else should be talking. I'm learning from that. Like, yeah. like, right, exactly. Like you know, like, so just just for for basketball itself, it's just like why? Like that's for what? If the goal is winning, why are we doing? It? Like, what is the purpose of doing it? The goal, the goal really isn't winning anymore, but whatever. Yeah, but see, um, matter of fact, oh, that's what it was. Um, Jay, what you say at the very beginning of your take, like the like the the Boston Celtics aren't Dallas, they aren't the Lakers. I honestly feel like, and this is what a lot of like a lot of those big teams do. They really rest more on their history. We, you know, the the Boston Celtics we knew was Larry Bird's Boston Celtics. The Lakers that we knew obviously was Showtime, Shaq and Kobe. You know, those, you know, obviously now with this new age, Lakers, you know, AD and LeBron, whatever. But I mean, with, I feel like the Celtics are more so resting on their merits here. Like they're, they're resting on what they did so long ago. Like, you know, and I feel like they haven't updated their resume. Like how you mentioned, the last title they won was in, you call it timeout on the play. Mm-hmm. What happened? What happened to Shaq and Kobe's Lakers ever? 
I just skipped right past that. Oh, is that it? I say, uh, magic era, and then... No, I say, yeah, I say, I say, I say, yeah, I say Showtime Lakers, you got Magic Kobe, and now you got the, the new Lakers with LeBron okay. and AD. Okay. Yeah, 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 definitely. I would never skip up those guys. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like I say, again, like, you know, I, as you mentioned, they didn't, that last championship they won was, I want to say, 07-ish, maybe? I, I got to find out the year exactly. But, yeah, again, mm-hmm. that's, you talk, you're talking, oh, wait, yeah, you're talking about a team that had Rajon Rondo, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, uh, Big Baby Day, I think Big Baby was on that team, Kendrick Perkins. All of those guys are retired. Stop. None of those guys, yeah, none of those guys <laughs> play basketball anymore. All those guys are retired. So, I mean, you know, like I said, you're holding on to something like that that happened. I feel like you guys haven't, they haven't updated the resume in forever. So it's kind of hard for even me to look at them and, you know, oh, you know, they pay a guy X amount of money. But is that really going to, is that going to put them over the hump? Is that going to, you know, is, is that going to allow them to get over the hump of being that team that you need to be in order to win a championship? Who knows? Um, I, I, I do genuinely believe that the Kristaps move was a great move. I'm a huge fan of Kristaps. So a tall seven footer, played defense. He had his best season, I think, stats wise, um, last year with the Wizards. So, um, I'm very inter- I'm very intrigued on, on that. But, um, I think overpaying, anything you overpay for something is just never good. Um, so yeah, that's just me, but. It starts with an asterisk. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's not, I mean, Jim, uh, not good for business. I don't, I don't see where the, the smartness in any way. Yeah, I mean that's the difference between ring chasers and people who just want the bag. Look at Brady; he he was fine with taking the the, the low pay and um, oh my god, where did he, he tamped the bag? Yeah, and he's like, just give me give me two good receivers and I'll I'll be all right. Someone's give down me, there. Yeah, give me give me two good receivers. Give me a good defense. Yeah, give me so a, give it works yeah. the same in the NBA. Look at Braun or um, uh, Curry. Curry, yep. Curry, yes. Curry, Curry basically sacrificed a lot of money he was supposed to be making to make sure Clay gets his money. Make sure they had enough room to sign KD. Make sure Draymond. they got enough room to keep Draymond. Make sure they had yeah. enough room to have the best bench in the league. Yeah. Like I said, again, I just, I, I, you, a thousand percent right. It's a great, that's a great point. Whenever a team is like this attempt to, I like this guy. you know, he they, you know, yeah, he does. Like, whenever these teams chase so much just to be relevant, like I said, just the you know, like you mentioned, ring chase. You start do you start you know mis you know, misconceiving yourself and believing that oh, if I pay this guy this amount of money, that'd be good enough. And the day, no, I don't think that's I don't think that's how you do it. Like to look at the teams that win it. You know, a lot of these teams that win it, you know, aren't teams that just oh we just paid these guys and now you know go look at the team who just won. It. You got that was a basketball team. You got Jokic, you got Murray, you got KCP. You got um, Michael Porter Jr. You got uh, Aaron Gordon. You got guys who were like in very good role and did their role to their best effort. Um, obviously with two star players, of course. But like I say I feel like with when you tie up so much money into one of your guys, I just feel like later on down the line, it's just so uh, you, you're betting so much on yourself right now that you're almost scared that you know you might not be able to have the opportunity again. And I feel like when you're operating from a place you scared them. You just, you know, you just make bad decisions. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. I completely agree with that. You, yep. yeah, ring chasing. I think, other than you could say the Warriors, but that team already had a ring when they got KD. Ring chasing it just doesn't work because it's a short term fix, and you need at least some chemistry and some bonding with a team because everybody's got good players. So at right. the end of the day, if you don't have chemistry, you ain't winning anything. So. Mm-hmm. Yup. Well, I'm excited to see what Boston does. Uh, they're going to obviously be hanging around. But, um, yeah, I think J- JT is going to eventually get his bag as well, just uh, depending on how much and where. I mean, yeah, he can get his bag. I mean, I mean you'll be just trotting out on the field. Or on the court, I'm sorry. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. You might grab three fans out of the stands. Um, that kind of be a, an, an incentive now. For, oh, if you if you buy this ticket for this seat, you might be in the <laughs> right for the start right, tonight. Um, <laughs> so yeah, right. it's like the fifty fifty raffles. Yeah, exactly. Like they're gonna they're gonna put it to where oh these tickets that we got on sale, these tickets like in gold. If you you know you're gonna be placing a raffle to see if you start for us tonight because we got so much money tied into 
two guys. Starting on up. Jason Tatum. Jalen Brown. Doug from Accounting. Jim Bob. Meredith, the automobile salesman. Right. And Sean, the <laughs> local baker. Right, exactly. That's what we're going to do back. Have at him, boys. All right. Let's go one, two, three. Let's go good defense. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> that was good. That one, that delivery made me lose it. I, 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 I think I wasn't very good at that. Well, yeah, we'll see how it all goes, but, um, yeah, I think that ought to be I think we checked all the boxes. We got all we covered. And Jay, you got any closing points in your first ever show? No, I appreciate y'all having me on. It was been a fun time. Um, looking forward to the Fantasy League and obviously dominating in that, so. Love the confidence. Love it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, that's awesome, my guy. Well, uh, yeah, uh, Jay, uh, you got anything else to close this out? Um... No, definitely thank you again, Jay, for being on the show. Um, got to know a lot about you. I can't I can't wait to see you in this um the fantasy league. I uh, just want you to know if you have any players that are doing what better than mine over the transparency of the season, I will be trying to trade. Um, so send you a whack ass trade too. To yeah, I'm, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna no, I am gonna go ahead and tell you now. Bro, I'm like Derek Henry ain't even that good. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and call Jalen Brown um agent. I'm gonna we're gonna be <laughs> on the phone with you. You know, we're going to try to sit you out for coffee, make sure you talk to you, Jay, you know, how you feeling, you know, what can you do to get this guy, you know, all this good stuff. But, uh, like, you know, all in all, right, exactly, like, like why do you, do you even want Cooper like, Cup? He, like, he, like, he, like, listen, this guy is leading in every category in a fantasy. Do you really want, like, is, is he <laughs> See that worth you can, yeah, do, yeah. you can do so much better. <laughs> right, you can literally, like, like, listen, I got a rookie. He's not, he's not even a rookie yet. He's, he's in college. Let me give you him, all right? But, uh, <laughs> I give you Caleb Williams for such and such, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So like I said, no, I definitely appreciate you being on. Um, great episode, of course. Um, like I said again, we're gonna see in the fantasy league. We're gonna definitely put the day in that. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be live. Uh, Glenn, obviously, you already know the routine. Great show as usual. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna be coming. This football season is right around the corner. The show is gonna be cranking up episode with back to back to back. We got a lot of good stuff coming up for the football season. Obviously when basketball starts and we obviously gonna have some MLB playoffs going to come in, in October. So like I said again, we're gonna be on a lot of a lot a lot of stuff um coming up in these next couple of weeks. Yes sir. Well absolutely well uh, like I said you have a great rest of your night. We're gonna stay tuned for a bunch of great stuff. Jay, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Spread the word. I I love to have you on anytime anytime again. So by all means have a great rest of your evening. We will see you soon, all right? Yes, sir. Peace out, fellas. Later. Man.